Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discovering what these scientists were able to create on top of the International Space Station very recently. And more specifically, something that we usually refer to as the fifth state of matter. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So I remember when I was in school, we were taught that there were actually three states of matter. There's the liquid, the solid, and the gas. Water is a really good example of all three because it can go through these stages right here in our own environment on Earth. The thing is, later on I learned that there's also the fourth state of matter known as plasma. The best example of plasma is of course something like this, basically fire. And it took a very long time for me to discover other states of matter as well. Turns out there are actually a lot more but most of them only occur in extremely, extremely unusual environments. Such as when things get really hot, even beyond what we can actually create here on planet Earth, or when things get really, really cold. And a lot of these states of matter are very interesting and very unusual. Some of them create liquids that behave in very different ways, like for example the so-called superfluid phase that can be created when helium is cooled down to extremely low temperatures, and it starts acting in very unusual ways. First of all, it has absolutely no viscosity, meaning that if you were to spin the liquid around, it would be spinning forever, and at the same time, it's even able to climb up the container sides and then spill um, underneath the container. These are very unusual, very counterintuitive effects. But another very interesting unusual state of matter is known as Bose-Einstein condensate, or BAC. And essentially BAC is like this really really large quantum state. Now it's kind of difficult to explain in a single video, but in a nutshell, here's how it works. There are these subatomic particles known as bosons. They're named after a highly underappreciated and relatively unknown in the West scientist that was working with Einstein, Satyendra Nath Bose. He was an extremely brilliant scientist, he came up with a lot of incredibly smart theories, but unfortunately he's not very well known. To make him more well known, the scientists decided to name the entire series of particles after him, so we have these bosons now. The famous Higgs boson that was discovered um, a few years ago is essentially one of these particles. About a hundred years ago, both Einstein and Bose proposed this idea that you could actually create a state of matter where the bosons start acting in a very peculiar way as these really huge quantum states. Essentially, the particles themselves start acting as waves but in very, very large, easily detectable volumes of space. And the way to do this is first of all to realize that a lot of particles are dual in nature. They can act as both particles and waves. But as you start cooling down these particles by essentially limiting their motion, they will start to produce more wave patterns and less particle patterns. Basically, they'll stop being particles and start becoming more wavy. It's a very challenging concept to understand, and it does take more than one video to kind of get your head around this, but it's very well known to us and it's been proven many times. As you lower the temperature more and more, the waves will increase in size. And at some point, when the temperature is really low, these waves will actually start crossing with one another and will even start becoming kind of like one wave altogether. If you lower the temperature just enough, and if you kind of slow down the particles just enough, they will actually form this one huge massive mega wave. All of the particles will become this one massive wave that we refer to as Beck, Bose-Einstein condensate. These mega-sized waves have been produced in a lab many different times, and we know that they exist, and we know that there could even be an explanation to the mysterious dark matter, as I explained in one of the previous videos. So they're actually a very important concept, and a very unusual quantum phenomenon that uh, we've been able to study for the past few decades. The thing is, here on Earth, because we have gravity, we have to kind of also prevent the Bose-Einstein condensate from, well, essentially being attracted to Earth too much, and so we have to hold it in space. Because of this, while holding the actual particles in space, you have to give them a little bit of energy, and by giving them this energy, it unfortunately provides just enough energy for some of the particles to start being particles again and not so much waves. In other words, it breaks the entire back apart. So in the lab conditions here on Earth, the backs can survive for maybe a few microseconds, basically only a few thousands of a second, and after that they disappear and become particles again. But over the years, the scientists realized that 
If you were to provide the conditions free of gravity, you would be able to create back for a longer period of time because you don't have to hold it in space anymore and it can actually float around in zero G conditions. And so they tried to use some of these experiments in various airplane conditions where zero G can be created for a few minutes, but it wasn't really that successful just yet. And some scientists thought that how about we take it to space? How about performing this experiment on the International Space Station? And well, they've just officially succeeded in doing that. And the back that they were able to create there lasted for over one second, or basically a thousand or so times longer than it does here on Earth. And the reason for this is because they didn't have to hold it against the gravity anymore, they only had to provide enough energy for the particles to slow down and to lower their temperatures. So creating these backs in space seems to be the way to go. While at the same time it also allowed the scientists to create much weaker magnetic fields, allowing them to see into these backs with even more detail. So essentially this is the perfect lab to study these unusual phenomena that we are not really good at studying here on Earth. But one of the more interesting parts of the experiment is how they produce these bags. It is not very easy. First of all, by using a very specific laser, the scientists are able to slow down the vibration of atoms. By slowing down the vibration, they're essentially cooling it down because temperature is the amount of vibration an atom has. The cooler the atom gets, the more wavy the particle becomes. But to hold these particles in place, they also have to introduce a strong enough magnetic field to prevent the particles from flying away. All of these little introductions, all of these magnetic fields, can unfortunately add the energy back to the particles and cause them to vibrate more, thus uh, destroying the back. But in space, you don't have to provide as much energy, so the Bose-Einstein condensate can survive much longer. To do all of this, they used a very unusual metal known as rubidium that you see right here, that has a very strange property of being easily vaporized by lasers. And so it's actually relatively easily manipulated with various lasers, which is why it was used in this particular experiment. Rubidium is a somewhat mysterious metal because we don't really know if it has any use in anywhere really, none of the organisms on Earth seem to need it, but nevertheless it does have experimental value. And so by using the magnetic field, the lasers and the rubidium atoms, the scientists were able to create this strange and unusual form of matter known as BEC that lasted thousands of times longer than it did on Earth. But I guess another question is, is it practical? Is there any use for these bags at all? And can we use them for something other than just playing around with unusual forms of matter? Well, it turns out that apart from being a potential explanation for dark matter, bags could also be an explanation and a way for us to discover dark energy as well. At the same time, there have been propositions of using these bags for very precise navigations in space, essentially using them as a kind of a navigation tool, while at the same time, we can also use them to study the mysterious gravitational waves as well. But most importantly, bags could potentially allow us to create extremely accurate detectors for, for example, searching for different minerals under our planet or on other objects like the moon. Because of the way that they change when minute energies and minute gravitational changes are introduced, we can use Bose-Einstein condensate to create some of the most accurate detectors of a lot of different stuff around the universe. In other words, these could be the future tools to analyze matter around us and to find new minerals for humans to mine and to help colonize other planets and other moons. In other words, this is definitely something that can become very practical and very useful in the future, so being able to create stablebacks, especially by using tools that we currently have, will allow us to become much better at what we currently do. But until we learn something else about these unusual states of matter, or until we discover something else about them, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support our channel on Patreon, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.